Our next competitor comes from a lap down under. Are you part of the Voo Crew? Let's I'm going to attempt to become the World Yo-Yo Champion. <sighs> if you've seen any of these yo-yo videos online, chances are you're familiar with modern day yo-yoing. Yo-yoing has evolved far beyond Walk the Dog and around the world and has developed into its own hyper niche subcult. Each year, every yo-yo player on the planet is given the opportunity to compete for the title of World Yo-Yo Champion. And out of the thousands of yo-yos who are eligible to compete, only the select elite few are ever crowned as World Yo-Yo Champions. There is a very real and highly probable chance that I never pull this off. But I no longer care. Today, my fear of a public failure is outweighed by my fear of regret in never properly trying in the first place. So, all right, how do these competitions work? Competitive yo-yoing is separated into five main divisions. We have 1A, which is the most popular and competitive division. We have 2A, where you use two old school traditional yo-yos. We have 3A, where you use two advanced yo-yos. We have 4A, where the yo-yo is not attached to the string. And we have 5A, where you yo-yo using a counterweight attached. And each year, five players from all over the world are crowned the world champion in that division. There are other divisions that go beyond that, but these are the main ones. The division I'm going to attempt to win is the 1A division. This is by far Yo-Yoing's most popular and therefore most competitive division. Now, I hate to berate myself, but anyone who truly knows the game of competitive Yo-Yoing knows that I'm not a real contender for the world's title. At least not yet. For as long as I can remember, yo-yoing was always something that intrigued me as a kid. Maybe it's because my dad was an avid yo-yo player back in his day. Whatever the reason, in 2009, I got hooked on competitive yo-yoing. It all started with the yo-yo on my cousin's desk. For the next three hours, it captured my full imagination. I went onto YouTube and typed yo-yo competitions. I wouldn't be disappointed. What I saw blew my 12-year-old mind. It transcended everything that I thought was possible with a yo-yo. How on earth did these guys get the yo-yo to spin for that long? How on earth is it possible to get that good at yo-yoing. It didn't take me long to figure out that these guys weren't using a Yotech Pro Switch. The most common conception of a yo-yo is something that looks like this. This can do all the basic tricks, but in order to do all the stuff online, you needed an entirely different yo-yo. The yo-yos these guys were using were metal, butterfly shaped, and unresponsive. I remember pleading with my parents to buy me my first yo-yo, and my parents, bless their soul, yielded every request. I was hardly a yo-yo prodigy, but when I'm passionate about something, I lock into it. To understand me is to understand a kid with a very selective window of focus. Before that, I went through a speed cubing phase. And before that, I got into making pivot animations on YouTube. And at this moment, modern yo-yoing hooked my focus. I learned to yo-yo purely via the internet and purely in isolation. And I was inspired by yo-yo players who I saw on YouTube. And slowly, over time, I got better and better until I was able to do the majority of the tricks that once blew my mind. At this point, I'd yo-yoed in isolation for the better part of two years, until one day, I discovered a yo-yo contest in Australia, the Australian National Yo-Yo Contest. I knew winning an international contest was not within my reach at that point, but looking at the caliber of Australian players, I thought, Maybe I might have a chance. The players who ruled the scene in 2010 was coincidentally another Vietnamese Australian yo yo named Vu Ho. Second place was held by a player named Keith Mitten, better known as Skip. Both these players inspired me hugely. Vu had made a name for himself when he was crowned the Australian National Yo-Yo Champion. Meanwhile, Skip had a name for himself performing tricks on Australia's Got Talent, edging into the semi-finals the furthest any Australian would ever make on that reality TV show. Both these players were celebrities and idols to me. It was clear I wasn't yet at their level, but I was improving at a consistent rate. So I let myself naively believe that in a few weeks of dedicated practice, I'd be capable of dethroning the current champions. I couldn't have been more wrong. In a stroke of bad luck, the year I decided to compete was one of the most competitive Australian nationals ever. Not only would I have to contend with more experienced Australian yo-yoers, there was an influx of yo-yo players from China who were also able to contend for the title as they were international students in Australia. 
I got up on stage and I did my best, but with no understanding of how the scoring system worked and no real prior yo-yo competition experience, I was trounced. I placed fifth in Australia that year, losing to Chang Yu Wayne Su by over 26 points. Now, of course I was disappointed, but again, it was like my very first yo-yo competition. Was I like that arrogant to believe that I would win my very first time? It was at that moment I felt my passion for yo-yoing morph into something greater. Suddenly, participating wasn't enough. I wanted to contend. So for the next year, I practiced like a madman. I refined my existing tricks, I moved away from blatantly plagiarizing my idols to innovating and iterating off their trick set. My leap in skill from 2011 to 2012 was a large one. And in 2012, I'd again face off against my buddies Vu and Wayne in our next contest. And despite not hitting a clean routine and changing out of yo-yo, one of the worst mistakes you can make in competitive yo-yoing, I won. It was the first time in my life ever that I experienced what it felt like to be a winner. For three years, I defended my title as the Australian National Yo-Yo Champion. I won in 2013, 2014, and 2015. I hadn't lost a yo-yo contest in over three years. Was there a chance I could take down plays on an international stage? Did I have what it took to become a world yo-yo champion? To warp public perception even more, I was one of the only competitive yo-yo players who had an active YouTube channel. So in the process of posting my tricks, I was able to amass an audience by teaching people competitive yo-yo hacks and posting yo-yo reviews. So by yo-yoing standards, I was a relatively well-known individual within the yo-yo community. So, in 2015, with the support of my dad, I took a year off from school and traveled the world. He thought that I would spend the gap year learning a new language or finagling my way onto a bank on Wall Street, but I, I did none of that. Instead, what I decided to do was travel the world and attend some of the most famous yo-yo contests and try to win them. Things wouldn't exactly go as planned though. For the first time in three years, I'd be surrounded by players who dwarfed my competitive yo-yoing ability, and I was in no position to beat just about anybody. My first stop was in San Francisco, where I placed 15th in the Bay Area Classic, my worst placing in over three years. I then traveled to Massachusetts, where I would place sixth. I then traveled to Singapore, where I placed 13th in Asia. Then it was off to Tokyo, where I placed a highly unimpressed 47th in the world. I might have been a big deal as a yo-yo player by Australian standards, but on an international stage, I was hopelessly average. And as much as I hate to admit it, that period right there, that was my competitive yo-yoing peak. In the yo-yo world, there's a narrow window to achieve greatness. The window is ordinarily between the ages of 15 and 18. Any older and you're bogged down by real world responsibilities that ultimately detract from your yo-yoing. And let's be real, there's absolutely no money in competitive yo-yoing. The closest thing we have in yo-yoing to money is having a signature yo-yo, whereby players put their name on a yo-yo and get a small royalty for each yo-yo sold. But that privilege was reserved for the best yo-yo players the elite. Not some Australian kid with a YouTube channel who placed 47th in the world. <sighs> You know, I often look back at my 2015 run and I wonder to myself what would have happened if I deferred my studies for another year and just poured myself hardcore into competitive yo-yoing when I was still at my competitive prime. Like, what would have happened? How good could I have possibly gotten? But that's not what happened. There's more to this story and there's a lot that has to happen until I'm currently here. So if you like this, hit subscribe button for episode two and I'll see you guys in the next video.